Hi, Mike Kennedy with you. Father's Day present. Mushrooms. Mushrooms of the northern, northeastern United States and eastern Canada by Timothy J. Baroni. This is a really uh, colorful, you know, there's a color photograph on almost every page. Some pages just have an explanation. Uh, but virtually every mushroom they talk about has a color photo. Uh, the book itself is uh, 600 pages long. Uh, it's got this nice chart in the back identifying the the uh, parts of the mushrooms and shem states, shem states, stem shapes, veils, stem surfaces, cap margins, gill attachments, and these are all. Uh, uh, things you would need to know if you're thinking of going beyond just edible mushrooms. You know, if you just if you're more interested in edible mushrooms only, a book like this uh, this covers the whole United States. So I have a guide that's really good that covers just the Northeast as well. But uh, this uh, the Complete Mushroom Hunter by Gary Linkoff, who unfortunately passed away. A while ago this is a revised edition but this goes into helping you just to identify uh, edible mushrooms and to know what the poisonous ones are that look like it so uh, that's more of a book just if you're interested in edibles but it seems like most people who go on with this start becoming interested in other mushrooms as well and there so that's where a guide like this you've seen me highlight the Audubon guide well the advantage to this one is this one was published in 2017, so the names are more accurate. I mentioned this in one of my other videos. With the DNA testing that's become so uh, affordable and, and good that a lot of mushrooms have been reclassified to different families. Like uh, one mushroom I eat whenever I can find it, uh, and nothing, practically nothing's come up this year because it's too dry, but by Keller Bolitz. Well, they have a new name, and it's listed under that uh, that name in here, which is uh, Barangi Bicolor, I believe. And it mentions a previous name, too. But it's been moved to another group. So, I mean, this is good in the sense that it has more up-to-date names. Uh, it uh, goes through spore colors of all the, all the different mushrooms, uh, uh, it does even include, uh, for those who go on beyond just spore prints and the, the features of the way mushrooms look, some mushrooms react a very specific way when a certain chemical is placed on them. And some of the common ones is a 10% solution of potassium hydroxide or a solution of ammonia. And there are some other ones as well. I I purchased those chemicals and I was going to use them this season, but this season's been a flop so far. But so it just gives you a lot of good information and one of the things why I think it's good to have multiple books is uh, then you see multiple pictures of something like I was noticing one uh, specimen in here uh, Berkey polypore in here it has quite a different color to it than what I've seen and so in some other books I've seen it in the color that matches what I've seen so sometimes that's a good way good reason to have more than one uh, guide or to go to authoritative uh, sites on the internet like Mushroom Expert and there's, there's a few other ones. I <coughs> Maybe it's because I'm old-fashioned but to me books are better than the internet. You can sit there and read them, look at them uh, and uh, I just like books better. You can thumb back and forth. I mean I use the internet too but uh, there's something about actually having a physical field guide, I think, that is something. And two, to me, uh, there's been a certain amount of vetting that's gone through. In other words, uh, you've got to be careful because it, some inf internet sites may not really be that authoritative and you're going to find information that's wrong on them. And usually in a book, that means that it's, uh, you know, the book had to be good enough to get published. And usually that means it's been work it's been worked on quite extensively and you're not going to find errors in it like you do in some 
some internet sites. I don't think you find any on Mushroom Expert, but uh, here's a yeah, here's just one that I found last year. Uh, but I'm going to enjoy using this. This one is interesting, but because it, it kind of encourages you to, which I've done with the Autobot one too. Well, it doesn't say that necessarily is. You know, you learn the major groups, and then the pages are color coded, so you could say, yeah, this falls in the guild mushroom with pink or purplish brown spores <laughs> and then you could you thumb through and look at the pictures you find something that's similar then you read the description to see if it actually matches you got to be careful like I say just looking at a photograph because some mushrooms look similar or they look similar because you don't know what you're looking at it's supposed to be different let me put it that way some people might look at uh, two photos and see glaring differences and other people might look at them and say, oh yeah, they look the same. And that's the case with some people with uh, chanterelles. Chanterelles have a poisonous look-alike that's quite different in some ways, uh, called jack-o'-lanterns. And uh, people confuse them, but really, if you know the characteristics of it and what they grow on, uh, you shouldn't be confused because there's enough differences that are uh, easily seen uh, to distinguish the two and uh, there are once you get into more extensive like if you really decide like there was a post the other day someone said and I kind of commented on it, there's a mushroom and someone said I found this in the front lawn can I eat it and it's like you'll drive yourself crazy doing that number one if you post it on the internet most people will ridicule, ridicule you because they don't like those posts that you haven't even given them enough information usually uh, for them to look at the photo and have enough detail to make a decision but the whole idea there's so many mushrooms out there i bet that uh, when mushrooms are up and i find 10 different mushrooms uh, there's going to be a number of them that aren't even in this book that covers or the the autobahn book i think covered 700. this doesn't say right off front uh, how many varieties uh, how many species it, it covers but let's say it's 600 pages let's make up that it covers 500 you know you can easily find a mushroom that won't be in a book with 500 mushrooms so uh, there's just so many out there there's thousands of mushrooms so that's why you have to be careful and not try to go down this rabbit hole of identifying everything you see sure if you if you decided that mycology is going to be your hobby the study of mushrooms then sure you do that but then you're going to be uh, you're going to probably you're going to need a microscope you're going to need certain chemicals uh, to do testing you're probably going to get uh, uh, a lot more books there's a book just on there's one type of mushroom called a bolete and that someone released a book I forget if it was last year or the year before uh, of beletes of North America and it alone is like over 500 pages so it's a very uh, very uh, close look at this particular group so there's just a lot of things and that's just covering one group so you could easily write a 500 page book identification guide for just about any group of mushrooms because it's just so diverse that's why if you're going to look for edible mushrooms uh, get books about edible mushrooms but then you have something like this too and it can it can back up information on this in other words the edible mushrooms are going to be in here I could look at that then I could look at this information in here and help with my identification but a lot of times I look at something and I'm just like boy this is really interesting what is this then we can go to this this guide and uh, hopefully it will be one of the, the many that they cover and at least sometimes you're going to get down to the group you might get uh, like recently I found a mushroom uh, that was growing on an old birch tree that had fallen and uh, I post my things on mushroomexpert.org and people will give their opinions of what the, I, the true identity of it is. And I had said it was this group, the species, and someone else said, well, no, it's that group, but it's not that species, and just put it back to the group name. So sometimes you're only going to get a group ID. In other words, the kind of family it's in and not the individual. And uh, that's fine when you're just trying to identify mushrooms, but of course, when you're identifying th things to eat, 
you have to be you have to identify to the species level you can't just can't say oh yeah this is a bolete and some boletes are edible therefore i'm going to eat this that's not going to go well for you so anyway nice father's day present oh, it's got a ruler on the back in uh centimeters and inches uh get kind of one of those uh soft bound hard bound cover if i could say that here's you can see some of the types of mushrooms and they've got the page number so conceivably you looked at this and said oh it's a coral fungus and it has the page numbers you could go from there to there and start looking so anyway i'm going to enjoy that book a lot bye